All right, so in this video, we're going to look at a tool that's going to help us to build chats and forms faster using React Hook Forms and Sod for validation. So if you've used chats and forms before, you know it takes some time to wire up your form fields with React Hook Forms, the use form hook, and the Zod for validation. Now this tool is going to help you to hook that up pretty fast. It's actually a visual builder. You can drag and drop different field types or input types and then it generates the code that you can copy paste to your um, project. But it doesn't stop there. It actually has more fields than ChatCN. A couple of weeks ago, that's actually how I came across this library. I was building a contact form and I was looking for uh, phone number input fields. This, this library has a custom phone number input. Uh, we're going to go over the components. Uh, it has date, time pickers, and more stuff that you can use inside of your forms. Um, but it also generates the code so it'll be easier for you and it eliminates the need for you to hook it up with the React hook form and Zod valid, uh, validation. So we're going to look at the components and then we're going to build uh, a contact form in Next.js applications uh, using this library, using the code that we copy from here. We're going to hook it up to our API endpoints and at the end I'm going to show you how you can make your API endpoint secure by adding bot protection and spam protection for your regular contact form. So let's just dive in here. Uh, there's a link to the description to this site that you can see here. You can go to the playground. As you can see on the left hand side, there are different fields that you could pick like checkbox, combo box, date picker, date time picker, for example. As you add these codes to your form, you can see the form on the right hand side. And this is how your, your form is going to look like as you're building it. It gives you the code that you can go ahead and copy to your code. We're going to see this in an example uh, shortly, but uh, the date time picker, it's really nice. It has the date and also the time. If you've used ShatCN before, you know ShatCN already has a date picker, but there's no time there. It's just using the calendar there. Uh, the calendar component that this is using actually has a time picker, but it doesn't look anything uh, as nice as this one. So that's one that I like. Um, the location input is for countries if you want, let's say Canada. If I can type that and then it, you can also select different provinces if you want. So it's really nice. Um, they have the location, the multi-select, passport, phone number, as I mentioned, again, has the country code. Uh, really nice. And then it also automatically formats it as we format phone numbers here in Canada. That's also nice. Um, we have signature input, so you can have this to sign at the bottom of your contact forms or any form that you're building that requires this. We have the slider, the smart date time input. That's actually really nice. Let me delete this so they don't get out of the hand. The smart date time, you can just type in like, let's say tomorrow at five and it just selects that automatically. Or you can just select here, go through the date you want and select the time. It's really nice. Also, we have the switch, that's your regular toggle button tag input. The tag input is also nice, so if you want to add categories, let's say, to your application, this just works like that, next JS. It's just regular tags that you can add. So definitely poke around with different components here. Um, but we're going to build a contact form that has, let's say, an input field for the name. And we're going to say, this is your name, Shatsy and why not? And the name prop of our field is going to be name, required, save changes. Let's add another input for our email. This is your email. Let's say you at shatsyn.com is our placeholder. Let's put this to email type required did I do the text type here maybe um, and then let's add this date time picker we're going to say maybe appointment date slash time select a time a date and time no placeholder and then let's name this field date time. Let's say it's required. And now you can see the form is built here, name, email, and 
appointment date and time already. I'm going to copy the code here. I'm going to bring this into my Next.js app. Now, on the code side, I have started the Next.js app and I've added ChatCN. So you need to add ChatCN because all of these components are using ChatCN components. There is a video on the channel where I talk about adding ChatCN to Next.js 15. So you can watch that. Uh, or if you have already created your Next.js app, you can just go ahead. I have a contact page here and a contact form that we're going to create together. So I have this contact form. Right now it's empty. So I'm going to copy the code that I got out of the tool right inside of here. And we're going to go over this and uh, make this nice. So we are not using the state. Let's just bring this up. We can just get Z from Zod. We're not using that. And I've already gone ahead and copied the chat CN buttons, form components, and whatnot. You can just go ahead and copy the codes that are used inside of whatever form that you're creating inside this tool. Those you need to add manually, but this already has the import statements over here. Now, the one component that doesn't come in chat CN is this date time picker. So the import statement is here, but we don't have that component. So you have to go to uh, the GitHub repository and go to components, go to UI, and select whatever component that you've chosen. So for example, I have chosen date time picker, and I have copied this whole thing wholesale into a custom component I created inside of my UI folder named date time picker. So just copy that. So whatever field that you are adding from this library, you have to just literally go get the code because the code is not there and it's not already in ChatCN. The regular stuff from ChatCN like forms, buttons, I don't know, inputs, popovers and stuff that's used inside of these forms can be directly, directly copied or installed from ChatCN. But anything that's custom, you have to copy from um, the library itself or the GitHub. Now, I've already defined my form schema inside of my lib. So instead of having it here, I have my schemas here. So form schema has a name, email, and date. These are string non-empty, and then the date is a string that we are coercing into a date. Okay, so now let's get the form schema from our lib inside of this file. Now, that form schema was automatically generated by the tool. So if you look at the code that was generated here, it already has the form schema. So it creates everything. That, that's why it's making uh, building forms faster. It already hooks up your schema. The use form hook is already here. I'm going to initialize this with name and email empty as my default values. I have my unsubmit form handler. This is going to get executed once the form submission actually passes the Zod validation. This is where we're going to call our API endpoint in a second. The rest is just using ChatCN and form components. If you are used to form components, this should be familiar for you. You just wrap the whole HTML form with this form component. Wrap this form. This is what you get out of the use form hook. And for every field, because uh, we are rendering uh, something custom here, we are passing in the form control and getting the render function to return our own fields, for example, Shatsy and input for the email and name, and then this date time picker for the date time picker. So it's um, already set up nice for us. So I have the contact form now. Let's go and open up our application, localhost port 3000. If I go to my contact form, I see this form already populated here. To just make it nicer, maybe I can wrap this inside of a card component. We can get this from ShatCN as well and maybe the card content just so we wrap it inside of a card uh, let's get this imported and maybe we can give this a class name of max with large all right so we have our form inside of a card. Nice. Now let's hook this up with an API endpoint. So we're going to go ahead and create an API endpoint. Inside of this, I'm going to say contact. And inside of this, I'm going to have a route.ts. So let's export an async, async function post. It receives the request, which is an instance of next request. 
Now to get the body, we're going to await request.json. Let's verify our data. So const result. Uh, let's get our form schema. Save parse that. If it's no success, well, we don't return an object. We return a next uh, response. All right, 400. Otherwise, console.log data, do something, send an email, and then let's return a message success. Sure. So this is our API endpoint that's going to handle the form submission. Even though on the client side, we are validating the data using Zod, you always need to verify your data coming from the client side inside of your server. API endpoint server actions doesn't matter. You always validate the data, authenticate that endpoint if needs be because these are public API endpoints, just like the server actions. Uh, so we validate the data and return the response back. Now, inside of our handle submit, let's just hook this up. So inside of this try catch, I'm going to call response and I'm going to send a fetch request to my contact endpoint. And then I'm going to get the JSON data. If there's an error, throw any error, sure. Otherwise, just uh, I can maybe form that reset. Let's turn this into an async function. So I'm hitting my API endpoint, sending a post request with the values as my body, returning the response in JSON. If there's an error, which means that I have hit here, there is something wrong with the verification or validation. I'm going to throw an error, which gets caught inside of my catcher. I'm going to show a toast notification using the toast component from ShatCN that I've installed uh, already. And then if not, I'm just going to say form submitted successfully. Okay, so let's see if this works. All right, so if I go ahead and submit, obviously it doesn't go through because we need this field. So Hamid, email, let's say Hamid at test com and then submit form submitted successfully if I go back and look at my terminal I have this object with name email and date time already logged in from my API endpoint okay so that's your regular stuff now let's take it one step further we want to protect this API endpoint against spam and bots and rate limit this API endpoint now a couple of weeks ago I introduced ArcJet which is security as code. So you write security inside of your code. So you co-locate the logic inside of your API endpoint server actions and middleware in Next.js, which allows you to combine security with your application logic. You can fetch your database and decide whether or not you wanted to allow a specific request to go in. That's substantially different from when you have a proxy sitting outside of your application server blocking requests coming in. You never know, you, you, don't, you don't get to make decisions or you don't see the requests coming in or why they are denied. Whereas with ArcJet, it's just inside of your uh, application server where you can just see what's happening and what's denied and whatnot. We're going to see this in action. But if you are not familiar with this, watch that video where I walk through what it is and what the concept is and then uh, an example of it. Again, I mentioned uh, we did a video with uh, forms in XJS 15. In that video, which is also linked in the description and somewhere in the card now, uh, we use server actions and the new use action state hook in React 19, which is a stable now to handle our forms. So that's a way to build robust forms in XJS 15. In that video, we're using ArcJet inside of a server action. So even if you're using server actions, you can still protect the server actions because at the end of the day, server actions are an API endpoint is just automatically created for you or eliminates the need for you to create that API endpoint. But under the hood, it is basically a post API endpoint. You can use ArcJet to protect that against rate limiting and bot protection. But you can also add ArcJet to your Next.js middleware that runs for the whole site. So it's very interesting. If you haven't already, go ahead and create an account. I've already done that. And once you have an account, you can get your ArcJet key and the installation process, it's really simple. So you get the ArcJet Next package. I've already done this. You set your environment variable key, and then you create a new ArcJet client and add rules. So for example, let's just create uh, 
this architect client if I can copy this wholesale excuse me you know what let's just copy the whole thing and I'm going to bring the whole thing over here and why not we're going to use a get request as well uh, let's get this one let's move that one up top and I'm going to explain what we're doing in a second so bear with me while I finish copying the code here so all right so this is our API endpoint the post API endpoint we already had right so we get this ArcJet from the library we just installed and we create an ArcJet client this is where you pass in your key and you define rules for example we want shield protection that protects your app against common attacks like SQL injection you can detect bots and protect against bots you can also allow certain bots like search engines and you can rate limit there are different algorithms you can use for rate limit here this is a um, token bucket rate limiting and once you have this client you can now apply it inside of your API endpoint for example this get is what I copied from the documentation so you get a uh, ag.protect and you pass the request object that's passed to your route handler function and this makes a decision for you for example if decision is denied we can check to see if it is because of rate limiting is it because of bot and then we can send different responses now this is where you can combine this decision that it is made already from the request with your application logic maybe you can fetch the database maybe you could check this user check the rates inside or the tier that they have and decide what you want to do um, and and whatnot and then if it passes meaning that the decision it's not denied then we're returning a regular response back so we can basically do the same thing like what I do did here and we can bring this inside of our post request before we even bother to verify the schema of our data we're going to say get the request object and make a decision right if it is denied for whatever reason we're returning different responses and it has the error object so it picks it picks it up inside of our form as well in our response is going to see this error and if not so if the decision is not denied then I verify the data using Zot validation I handle the form submission however I want and I carry on now to show you this in action I can't really show it here unless I just quickly submit or resubmit this form a couple of times but what I can do is since we already have this get handler as well inside of this API endpoint uh, we can just go to that API endpoint for slash contact and so if the first time it just says hello world because that's what we say if everything is okay we just return this hello world but because this is a get request I can just hammer it down until it just gets too many requests and rate limits me against that protection so now you have the same protection inside of your form API endpoint that handles your form submissions which is really great again you can have this in server actions as well if you that if that's how you prefer to handle your form submissions so to recap we have this new tool that works similar to Shatsian in that you copy and paste code it's not an extra tool that you install some of the comp custom components you have to actually go ahead and copy those custom components that because they don't come in Shatsian like the date time picker and anything else that you're using we hooked it up with uh, react hook forms and Zot for validation we didn't need to have that wiring up ourselves this uh, tool automatically gives gives us that code that we can copy and paste you have to do some minor changes for example I brought my schema back into my lib folder so I can use it inside of my API end, endpoint as well uh, some of the imports might not be used so you have to still work through it but it gives you like the basic so that you can quickly build your forms I hope this was helpful for you if you have any questions like always hit me down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one bye bye